Okay, we're on a very uh, tight schedule, so I think I better begin, even though people are still wandering in from breakfast, um, because we have uh, many speakers at this colloquium. So I'd like to begin by thanking Jill Sackler, uh, who funds these uh, series of colloquia in honor of her husband, Arthur Sackler. So I want to thank you very much. Jill, are, are you in the audience now? Ah, so you want to stand up and wave a little bit, and we want to thank her very much. We should also thank the National Science Foundation, who uh, came in with some significant funding to help fund young investigators, who many of whom are now here and in the audience. Um, okay, so I am uh, Rich Schifrin. I am uh, uh, sort of a chief organizer of this thing. We have six co-organizers. Um, and I want to just give a brief introduction to this uh, colloquium. Um, so data is the basis for scientific progress, and causality is the way that uh, humans come to understand what the data imply. Now, a sea change in the way that uh, this process operates has taken place in recent years because we, as humans, have developed the ability to produce, measure, collect, and store amounts of data far beyond uh, anything imagined previously. So these are just sort of standard uh, examples, fanciful numbers that are collected on the internet these days, um, giving examples of the kinds of data that we're collecting these days. And you can see the numbers go up by factors of 10 to the third as we move down this scale. It could be if we go all the way down to yottabytes, for example, that might be something like the amount of information on the World Wide Web in this year or next year. No one's really sure, but something like that. So the amount, the amount of data we're collecting and storing is uh, basically unreal and unprecedented. And the amount keeps going up as time passes. Now that raises uh, several, um, oh, by the way, I should say that some of the data that's collected is collected in real world environments and complex systems, like uh, things like uh, Facebook uh, data and things of this nature. So there's just a large amount of varied data collected in a real world setting. But in addition, we've uh, developed the ability to measure data much more precisely, even in uh, experimental settings. One of my colleagues, Olaf Sporns, um, recently got involved in a project where um, they're working with a single mouse brain. And um, the amount of data they're anticipating working with is uh, 1,000 terabytes of data about one one thousandth of a single mouse brain. And this gives you an example of the kinds of data that people are facing these days, both in the real world data and in experimental settings. Now, we're just beginning to figure out ways to analyze and understand what the data show and how to understand it. And of course, this isn't restricted to science because these problems are occurring everywhere in business, government, entertainment, social media, security agencies, social networks generally. And there's two main challenges. First, how do you find what are the important patterns in the data? And that uh, subject uh, really requires a, uh, a um, sacro colloquium of its own. So uh, if there's something like um, uh, terabyte of data, maybe there's a thousand factors you can measure in a particular uh, setting. The number of correlations of all those factors in various combinations might be an order of uh, two to the uh, south thousands or about, not a thousand, two to, to a large, two to a large number in our, which is about a 300 digit number. Um, so finding what the patterns are in the data is a non-trivial problem. And as I said, that could require a secular colloquium of its own. Um, having found the pattern, how do you explain its causes? Well, that's the focus of the uh, present secular colloquium. Again, if you have a terabyte uh, database, um, and you notice, say, one factor A is correlated with another factor B in that database, maybe there's a direct causal connection between the two, but uh, maybe there's some other kind of causal uh, loop that connects the two that better explains the data. Um, to infer the probabilities of causes, you have to consider all distributions of probabilities assigned to the something like two to the 300th power possible causal loops. 
Now these kinds of numbers are ridiculous, of course. They're fanciful and they're absurd, but they're also impossible to deal with by any kind of computational machinery you could ever imagine. So um, obviously we need new techniques, both um, in terms of computational techniques and in terms of statistical techniques to deal with these kinds of numbers. These are under development, and we'll hear about some of that today. Now I'm sure that computational algorithms are not going to be sufficient to answer these questions. And um, therefore, models and theories are going to be absolutely critical. Um, I'm missing a slide here. It doesn't really matter. The point is that um, in order to find patterns in data, we're going to have to be guided by our models and our theories, because we won't know where to look otherwise. And in order to, um, in order to explain uh, the causes, that we see we're also going to have to be guided by our models and our theories because, again, there's no way to do this computationally with the numbers that are involved here. So um, let's see. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to, uh, let's see, well, we have a little bit of time left. Um, I would say that um, if you take a very high-level perspective, drawing causal inference from big data is a lot like science writ small. So in science, we find patterns of data in the real world and in experiments. Then we typically uh, use models and theories to explain and understand them. Those are generally causal models. We uh, got, use them to guide further search for patterns and to go into the laboratory and carry out many experiments designed to test various uh, uh, of these causal explanations, and so forth and so forth. And I think this is going to be one approach to big data. We're going to say we're going to treat it. As, we're going to treat it as the same way we treat data from the real world um, in science. And uh, then, the, on the other hand, we're going to also have um, attempts to st stay within the database, the complex databases we collect, and to uh, try to infer causal connections from the data itself without necessarily going out to the laboratory and testing it. Uh, sometimes you can't go to the laboratory and test things. If you measured uh, every, every aspect of weather in the entire world for the last 24 hours and tried to infer whether a uh, thunderstorm in Kansas, what the causes were for a thunderstorm in Kansas, for example, you couldn't go in the laboratory and try to test this uh, idea. It's uh, too large a system and too complex. So many times you have to try to find uh, explanations that are within the database itself. Um, Okay, I want to make sure that we stay on time during this uh, colloquia. Um, I think we're all excited to hear about what kinds of uh, new techniques are being developed to deal with uh, uh, big data. And I will call Michael Jordan up to the uh, podium to give the first real talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>